Hi, this is Ron Nutter, and welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter. This time we're going to show you something a little bit different, and I'm going to show you how to take your Fire TV and use it as an internet browser. And that starts now. <laughs> I'm sure all of us at some point have, have gotten into a situation that, okay, we've got the nice big screen. We've got maybe a couple of media streaming receivers, AV receiver, but yet there's that one time every once in a while when you want to check something on the internet. And do you really want to haul out the laptop? I think the answer is going to be no, unless you really want to do it. And it happens to be handy. In the past, the way some folks handled, they've actually had a computer sitting right near the the TV that was plugged into one of the HDMI ports. Well, now that means you got to have a wireless keyboard and a wireless mouse, and how often do you really use it? Now, I've got a Mac Mini running Plex in, into my uh, TV, but to get remote control means I either need to have another computer or a wireless keyboard, so it's kind of a, there's not a good solution. And then I started looking for options, and I, Intel has got several good uh, sticks, and they're in a form factor not too much different from from this device. And they're well, one there's one thirty dollars that runs Linux. And I'm still kind of thinking about that one for some reasons that'll come out a little bit later. They have another one that's about seventy or eighty dollars, I think, that runs Windows 10. Again, it's an option. And I may still bring those in at some point to show. I reached out to Intel and there were not any review units available. So I'll just have to uh, make a few extra trips to the blood bank here in the next few weeks. And then I can uh, start to bring some of that in. Now, here's what I came up with. Once I started doing some digging, I realized, hey, the Fire TV is running a version of Android. You, you have to really have dug under the hood to 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 know about that one and i didn't know it for a while and one time i heard it went well yeah so what didn't make a big deal it does make a big deal and here's why the secret sauce in this is you have to get a little wireless keyboard like this now i'm going to shift over to another screen here now this is i, I had two of i had to go buy this one because the one i had was not bluetooth and there's the deal right there if you don't see this little bluetooth button up here on the right hand side of the keyboard You've got the Wi-Fi keyboard, and after struggling with trying to get it to work, I didn't realize that little nuance. So you do, and that's not a bad price. It's built-in rechargeable battery. You charge it through the through the USB port here. The instructions don't say, but I would say, well, I wouldn't want to let it sit on charge for several days. Certainly, six to eight hours, and your your use will will kind of determine how much you have to do it. So really, this is not a bad price. So the first thing you go and do is associate this with your Fire TV, whether it's the Fire TV stick like I'm using or one of the other Fire TVs, this will get associated as a Bluetooth keyboard. So you go into settings, you will, it's about halfway over roughly, and you will see how to get it associated and you'll just tell the Fire TV to start scanning. And then if this is already on, then you'll hold that Bluetooth button for a few seconds and then you should see it pop up on the Fire TV screen. Now to agree to get this thing started, you're still gonna have to use this. This is what knows how to wake it up. Uh, eventually you may will figure out a way where you can do it from this, but so far that has not worked for me. So really that this is, is the secret sauce and then knowing these next steps. Now, there is one program, once you get the keyboard up and running, and this, this is the part that's going to make it a whole lot easier because if you've tried entering in username credentials for one of the channels, whether it's Hulu or whatever, you know the royal pen and the glutamus maximus that can be. Well, this is where the keyboard starts making it a little bit easier. And there's still going to be some learning with how the backspace versus the uh, delete key work. And it's not always intuitive, but it's an option. After you get this up and running, there is a, an app called Downloader. And we'll see here in just a minute. And this is where you get the whole process taken care of because you're downloading a series of Android pack files. So let's bring over the video here and come on. It's not wanting to 
Oh, come on. There we go. Now, this is, basically I just put my camera in front of the screen, and the downloader app is the one we see right over here. Now, there are a series of links you will see in the show notes, and if you're listening to the podcast, it's all in the podcast notes on techbyteswithronnutter.com. You can enter it here. Let me get my ugly mug out of the way. But if you're re-downloading for some reason, you go to Files, and you can see that I've already had Firefox, Opera, and Chrome. And you see, they're APK files. So in this case, it realizes that I already had it because I didn't uninstall it the way that I should have. So I'll just tell it to do it all, and that's going to be pretty straightforward from there. And you step down, it shows you all the different permissions it's got to have. And then you'll just click Install. Now, I'm going to stop the video here in just a second because the, and you already see it, I cut out a section because you didn't need to see the autofocus going in and out. So this is Chrome up and running. And I'm going to back it off just a little bit here because I want you to see some of the differences. And you got to accept and continue. You can't get past the lawyers without that. Now, this little dot you're seeing right here is actually the mouse built up here in the keyboard. And so I'll first I was going to go to CNET.com. Well, that I decided better of that one because I don't want to get into any copyright issues. And this is where when you see me do an M, I've actually hit enter. Well, the interface for the Fire TV assumes that I want to do a second M. So that's where you just have to go down. And I'm going to enter tech bytes with ronnutter.com here. And I'll do the same thing again here in just a second. But, you know, technology is great when it works. And there's here's when I hit the enter key. Okay, so I'll just back that off. And then I just use the down arrow key on the keypad. And click enter on next and there you go there's the the podcast website so that is showing you the difference now here's the other day up up in their upper right hand corner there's the menu button and the way the screen's kind of overlapping I, I have to figure what's what's causing that this is what you get when you get the regular android apk files you can do the tabs you can do the bookmarks this is everything like you're used to so really that's can't get much much better than that now there is a version of firefox that you can get from the app menu within the fire tv but it's a very limited one the ones that you saw in the menu are full-blown android apk files and it's, it's going to be as close to a regular user experience. Now, there's going to be some things like Java that may not work out uh, well, because then keep in mind, you have a limited amount of space in the Fire TV stick or the regular Fire TV. So it wasn't meant to be doing kind of what we're doing with it, but we're, we're kind of going around the barn, so to speak, to get it to happen. So this is really... Once you've got the Fire TV, and you saw this about $27, $28 for this, and I've got links to it in the show notes for you to get the same keyboard. There are, as long as it's a Bluetooth keyboard, it's probably going to work. But when I'm, I've done enough experimentation where things went dud that I wanted to stay with what I knew was good. Now, the one I had, and I think I said this earlier in the video, was not the Bluetooth one, and I didn't realize that. So it didn't have the Bluetooth logo up here. That's what you need to see. If you've got one of these that doesn't have the Bluetooth logo, this is not going to happen, Cap'n. But so far, it's it's been interesting. I mean, certainly entering in the URL with this beats the heck out of going up, down, up, down, up, enter, press, up, down, press, press. You can get yourself carpal tunnel, I think, with this one very quickly. So this one is is very handy. And the other thing where this comes in is when you're in a hotel and you have to get past their the the technical term is walled garden. You have to basically identify yourself that they know you're a valid user. And this is a much easier way of if you have to go much past entering the room number and maybe your name so they can do a, a quick correlation. This is still going to be the the way to go. It's very compact, very uh, lightweight, so really I can't complain a whole lot. So this is, you, know, you, you can't get it much easier than this, and I've not seen a lot of discussion on this one. So this is something where you've got your choice of Opera, Firefox, Chrome. I use Chrome more than anything else because of some of the extensions 
that are available for security purposes. You can also get the regular you can use a Silk browser, and I think there's a default Android browser. Uh, I've seen references to that, but I, I stuck with the big three because I usually go between uh, Chrome and Firefox. I've used Opera some, but at least with getting the APK versions of this, you can have the menus, and if you log into it, at least for the Chrome one, I can't speak to the others, but you should have all your tabs and everything. It's just a matter, not your tabs, but all your bookmarks. So then it's just a matter of how big your list is and is it going to fill up the memory in the Fire TV 6. So there's something to be said for, for not logging in. But this is at least an option. I mean, this certainly beats the heck out of hauling the laptop out. And especially if it's a company laptop and you really don't want the company to know what you're doing, that you're doing anything uh illegal but there's things that you know if it's for your personal use then they don't need to know about it there it, it's it's interesting i'm i'm really impressed in the, in the short time i've used it now there is something else i was showing this in in another video you can establish a vpn through the fire tv and like i said that's another video because that's a little more involved but especially with the hotel networks most of them the wireless networks are are when i say wide open there is no encryption on them and they do that by design because they don't want any support headaches well both doing a vpn you've now got everything encrypted up to the access point and then it's out on their network so uh at least with running a vpn you're now up to their access point and well off their network to where you hit the vpn termination point so that's at least an option and it, it, it's worthwhile considering. And we're, I'm going to do some testing with how it affects the uh, Amazon channel and some of the others to see if, it, if there's any repercussions. But at least you now got a secure computing device so that even if the site is HTTPS, you're adding another layer on top of that. And it's just, you, you can't be too careful. But at least this way, you don't have to haul out the laptop. You can just haul out your little keyboard and then now you have much easier time of getting the Fire Stick or whichever Amazon device or whatever ones you're taking with you. Because this may work on the others right now. The Amazon Fire TV is the only one I've tried this with. I've looked on the Roku. Haven't seen all the pieces yet. So that's that's going to be another exercise in the process. But anyway, that's an interesting use to it. And something especially if you're traveling, renting, away from home, you have this and a Fire TV and you've got access to uh, being able to look some things up. Thank you very much for your time. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. Appreciate everyone who has so far. Make sure you click on the bell notification icon so that you get notified as soon as I come out with any videos. I'm trying to do about two to three a week. I did one yesterday and doing this one and I will try to have another one out tomorrow. The If you're not where you can watch the videos, I also simulcast this on my podcast, Tech Bytes with RonNutter.com. There are affiliate links in the show notes for all the items that I've talked about. I do get a small commission off that. It doesn't change the price you pay at all. And if some of you shop other than Amazon, let me know, and I'll see about getting links for those as well to uh, make it easier for you. Well, that's about all I've, I've got at this point on this one. Like I said, we'll be doing one on doing a VPN will be looking and actually I'm looking at a couple of different VPN providers because anytime I do something, I always like to have a backup plan and you'll, you're going to see that as kind of an ongoing theme with me. So appreciate your time watching this or for listening to it. If you were, uh, were listening on the podcast and we'll see you again soon. Take care.